When we say macrolides or macrolides, we are specifically talking about four antibiotics here. Erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin, and fidexomycin. You probably know that fidexomycin or deficits comes in oral form only, has almost zero oral bioavailability, and is solely used to treat C. diff infections. Let's shift the focus now to the other three. Azithromycin and clarithromycin are modified versions of erythromycin with an improved spectrum of activity and fewer GI side effects. Azithromycin remains the most commonly used macrolide in clinical practice because azithromycin has a more favorable side effects and fewer drug-to-drug -drug interactions compared to clarithromycin and erythromycin. Erythromycin is the oldest one. The two remaining clinical uses where you might still see erythromycin being used are an off-label use as a gastric motility agent in gastroparesis patients, oral and IV form, and ophthalmic eye drops to treat eye infections and for the prophylaxis versus necessary gonorrhea and chlamydia trachomatis eye infections. Now, clarithromycin is a major CYP3A4 substrate and a strong inhibitor of it. That's why it has many drug interactions, including major and dangerous ones, like the one with amiodarone interaction with amiodarone and digoxin. Its main clinical use nowadays in practice remains in the treatment of H. pylori. No reason to use it otherwise if azithromycin is available. Remember that all of them can cause prolonged QTC, except of course fidexomycin, simply because it has zero oral bioavailability. So make sure to have a baseline EKG before starting them. Let's talk more now about azithromycin, which is widely used in clinical practice. Azithromycin is active against gram-positive, gram-negative, and mycobacteria. It has zero anaerobic coverage. Its gram-positive coverage does not include MRSA or enterococci, and its gram-negative coverage does not include ESBL-producing bacteria. Now, for pseudomonas infection, we don't usually use it for such indication, but azithromycin is sometimes used to treat chronic pseudomonas lung infection in cystic fibrosis patients. Azithromycin also has excellent activity against several atypical bacteria, including Mycoplasma, Legionella, and Chlamydia. Among azithromycin antigram positive activity, it has excellent activity against Trypnoma, although resistance started to emerge. And among its gram-negative coverage, it has excellent activity against Moraxella, Haemophilus, and Bordetella pertussis. Covering all these respiratory pathogens makes azithromycin a perfect choice for the treatment of community-acquired pneumonia and COPD exacerbation as a monotherapy or in combination with ceftriaxone. Azithromycin is also active against multiple STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, pathogens, including necessary gonorrhea, mycoplasma genitalium, a hemophilus to cry or chancroid, Klebsiella granulomatis, granuloma inguinale, and chlamydia trachomatis. This makes it an excellent choice in STD treatment as well. And it does not stop there. Azithromycin also has great activity against enteric gram-negative pathogens, including Shigella, Salmonella, Vibrio cholera, Campylobacter jejuni, and Yersinia enterocolitica, which makes it a good choice in infectious diarrhea treatment whenever needed. Now, how about tick-borne diseases? Yes, azithromycin can be used to treat some of them like babesiosis and Lyme disease. And of course, you know, it has activity against non-tuberculous mycobacteria like mycobacterium avian complex infections. So respiratory infections, infectious diarrhea, STDs, and tick-borne diseases are the main uses of azithromycin in clinical practice. One more thing to mention here is that azithromycin and macrolide in general have an anti-inflammatory effect. Azithromycin may have a role in chronic treatment in advanced COPD, cystic fibrosis, and bronchiectasis patients. Azithromycin comes in IV, oral, and ophthalmic forms. Ophthalmic forms can be used in bacterial conjunctivitis. No renal or hepatic dosing adjustment is required. And let me finish with this. Whatever we said about azithromycin applies to clarithromycin, except, of course, it does not work for STDs. Clarithromycin does not work for STDs, but again, clarithromycin has more side effects and significant drug-to-drug -drug interaction, so there is no need to use it, except, of course, sometimes in H. pylori treatment. Thanks for watching.